Find the ConnectWise control solution that is right for your clients. No, it's not a sponsored video by them, but I wanted to bring up an important topic. A lot of these hacks, a lot of these uh, ransomwares against MSPs have been facilitated by the power that comes with this MSP software. And I want to talk about a tool specifically, one that we use, and kind of give you the scenario for how this tool was used to deploy ransomware. And like anything in the world, if uh, with great power comes re great responsibility, and that certainly applies to this. So while this tool makes it very easy to facilitate connections to thousands of computers, to facilitate connections uh, that allow me to push software updates or deploy any type of software across all of my clients, you know, makes us uh, more efficient, more profitable because we can manage things at scale. You know, I'm singing all the praises, right? But what happens when you lose control of your software? Unfortunately, a lot of IT providers have found this out. Now, I highly, highly recommend, and before you go any further, if you're using ConnectWise Control and you have not validated that every single user that you have on there has TOTP two-factor authentication turned on, and that's time-based authentication, uh, you know, things you can use like Google Authenticator or other time-based authentication mechanisms for, but time-based is the way to go. It is excellent. It is highly, highly necessary. Also, password reuse. If you're reusing passwords, don't. That's a frequently the side, side of this where the breach occurs. And through debriefs and through people I've talked to in industry who've gone through breach remediation, uh, free, they've taken control of their uh, ConnectWise. This is not a fault flaw in the product. This is not the fault of ConnectWise. All of this is directly related to people not having control of their password. Now that we've gone covered that, let's talk about what kind of fun we can have. So I have my uh, Ponage system that we have a demo set up here, and we're going to start covering some of the basics. So the first one is, this is ConnectWise Control. This is VirtualBox. So Windows 10 uh, clone running in a VirtualBox. So you can see that when I do things on here, the user can go, hey, I see you doing things. Please know at the top, it says your computer is being controlled by Tom. So Obviously, this requires uh, people to lock their workstations and all those good security habits that you're preaching to all the users, which are all valid. Um, we're going to go ahead and lock it out. So let's go ahead and uh, lock the workstation, right? All right, it's locked. So great password. Uh, if I tried to log in and try to do this, there's a password on it. So I've thwarted the bad guys because, you know, people didn't leave things logged in. So now we've stopped them, right? Mm, we're going to go ahead and do this. So we're going to select uh, login session backstage. Here's the first thing. That noise you heard was this. And let's log in now. Tom's not in control. The little box is gone. This is the first step that a lot of them do. Look, a PowerShell right at the command prompt here. But obviously, this is not the fun way to do it. I mean, I can run PowerShell commands. I'm, you know, I have full authority on this machine. I'm running at the base level of the machine with both PowerShell and CMD open. I can launch things. I can run things in this session. And it's uh, the user being locked. It doesn't matter. I have system level permissions because that's what these systems install as. So I'm obviously able to run anything I want on here and do so without the user's interaction. Matter of fact, right now, there's nothing to indicate that I'm connected. But if I switch back, Hey, look, your computer's being controlled by Tom. It, it lit up here. Now the user knows I'm connected. So let's go back to locking the system again. So go here, and we'll do the good security hygiene and lock the workstation because we're away from it. And we'll close this too because let's talk about how what the escalation part is. So yeah, Ponage, uh, we're now disconnected from it. What can we do without having to do an interactive session at all? Because going to a complete non-interactive session, well, that's way easier to do, right? Actually, quite. So if we go over here, and I have a few things that have already been playing around and running in here, this allows you to push backend commands. This is when any of the machines are connected, this gives me PowerShell access. Actually, it gives me different types of shells. So we'll do this right here. Uh, let's see, what do we want to do? Let's issue a command like this. Let's uh, We're going to choose a shell, and you do that in a similar way that you do in Linux. As a matter of fact, if you're linked to a Linux client, you can do this on Linux. So if we do uh, bang ps uh, or uh, hashtag, 
however you want to look at that, <laughs> pound sign, but I say hashtag when I see it sometimes, pound sign, exclamation point PS for PowerShell. I hold down shift, press enter, so I'm on the next line, so I can actually ex execute the command. And let's say we execute, uh, we'll just do, I'm not a PowerShell expert, so I have some stuff I'm going to copy and paste in, get process list. So boom, there we did, just execute PowerShell, and we're gonna dump a process list of things running. Now I can go further and start and stop and delete processes and move things around, but obviously what's more likely is I would run a command more like this. If I'm gonna deploy my uh, malware on here from a bad actor who has backend access. And by the way, I'm doing this without any type of user interaction. Matter of fact, it's not showing connected here. Now, so we go here, I'm just gonna paste it in. So we did PowerShell, new object web client, and I'm not gonna pipe this in to execute it, but I just grabbed something off of my GitHub. So raw.github user content, flip side creations, dot files. It's just my uninstall.sh on there. We're gonna ahead and run this command. Now, because I didn't actually pipe it into execute, it's just going to dump on the screen what it downloaded, but it's showing the proof of how easy I could have taken some type of PowerShell script that were to deploy the ransomware at the system level and how quick I was able to do that. So I could just go into each one of these systems and push it out there. Now, a couple other methodologies that we can use. We go ahead and go here, here, and I'm doing this from Linux. It's a little different if you do it from a Windows machine, but if we go to toolbox, and I'm blurring out some of the things in here, but what I wanted to show you is I can just kick these off and uh, we have some client data in here because this is actually how we'll, we use this to push our RMM updates or when we're onboarding a new client. We'll get connect to a screen connect and we're going to be able to push this over there. Uh, but I can just click this and it's going to install it automatically on their computer. By the way, I'm doing it with it locked. So it's locked. Let's go over here and see what's going on behind the scenes here. Oh, it actually did find an error because I didn't have it. I just threw Angry IP Scanner on there and it went to the Java downloads. I don't have Java on there. But please note, I was able to install software while their screen was locked. How does that work in Screen Connect? Well, what's going on is I can add, and once you have breached a system, you go to the toolbox. You can add anything you want to the toolbox. So you add your wares on there. You can just quickly start deploying things from the toolbox to all the systems. And you can see, once again, it's another methodology. In what I'm trying to highlight here is how quick things can spiral out of control. The risks are very real, and we've seen this, and I bring it up again, because I only covered it last week. The dental company, they were using ConnectWise Control. My summation, not that I have inside information, but I know they were using ConnectWise because they have it on their site. And I did talk to one of the people that worked for the dental, uh, that will, was a victim of this. and. They said, yeah, they have Screen Connect on all the computers. Screen Connect's what it used to be called. It's called ConnectWise Control now, but they have it on all of them. So they were able to, the bad actors, to, once they had control of this, rapidly deploy to hundreds of workstations. And this isn't just true of ConnectWise Control, where SolarWinds, and I didn't want to take the time to set this up on our uh, SolarWinds platform, but SolarWinds has similar features where we can deploy things at scale to entire client groups or mass amounts of computers. Any of these tools have to be locked down with the utmost of security. That is one of the reasons I recommend making sure that two factors on, that you never reuse passwords, that even that your username, which is frequently your email address, not necessarily be the email address you usually use for emailing back and forth clients, perhaps create an alias. Also, you know, make sure when you have the uh, two factor on that it's not SMS based, that makes it a, you know, better attack vector because you can hijack SMS. We've seen this happening quite a bit. Uh, the preferred method, like I said, is TOTP, time based authentication. But I just want to kind of show how quickly things can go out of control. These tools are very powerful. And one of the problems, and this is where uh, there's discrepancies when there's a breach. Now they may use it for ransomware because that is the most lucrative, most profitable thing, but this works two ways. If I wanted a file off of their desktop, if I wanted uh, access to data, especially if you have control, quietly have control and no one has realized the breach has occurred because you haven't ransomware them, it is possible, it is absolutely plausible that they have removed data from the computer. They have copied any data they want. They could also install quiet backdoors. They could actually run the ransomware attack over time and have it time-based where they've installed all the back end and they've set a date by which it all executes so they can do it over time. This is why, you know, everything from watching your logs in Screen Connect, uh, watching any of the logins, restricting everything down and 
auditing all the time is so critical. I just want to bring this up because I know there were some questions I seen in the, you know, of how did they do it? And this is the methodology. This is the plan of attack that undoubtedly was used uh, based on everything I've read and everything I've known about a lot, actually a lot of these attacks when um, tools like this was involved. Once your RMM tool, once your uh, remote access tools are compromised, uh, you have a huge uphill battle and there's no way to guarantee to the client as much as people want to say this. And this is the uh, hard truth of it. Once someone has had access with a tool like this that has system level access, those machines need to be wiped. The only way to trust those machines again is to wipe them. And if someone were to ask, did they take any data, any personal data, any financial data, any uh, medical records or whatever that client had, the answer is you don't know. Unless there was a log of it, which by the way, if they have remote access and they have admin privilege, they're going to delete all the logs. Um, you have to assume the answer is yes and then follow all the procedures that go with uh, that, you know, whether you're compliant in HIPAA, Sarbanes-Oxley, whichever compliance industry you're in, uh, you have to notify and follow the proper legal channels to do this. It's unfortunate, it's tragic, but uh, that's just the reality of it. So I just want to make this video kind of show how easy it is, uh, how you can quickly go in here and just dump commands PowerShell without any user interaction. You can do installs without user interaction. Uh, so people that say like, hey, I locked my, I told my users to lock the screen so I don't have to worry about this. <clears throat> Unfortunately you do. These systems, as long as they have connection, they have system level privileges and they have the ability to execute. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.